That Saturday morning, when my husband left for work, the county sheriff came down through the neighborhood saying that we all really needed to evacuate, that the water was getting very high. All our family lives right there within blocks of each other. So we're all telling each other, we need to get out now. There were barns, there were animals floating, I mean, debris coming down. It was horrible. The bridge that goes across the river in Sand Springs, it was touching the bottom of the bridge. It was that high. I got home and I had uh, five foot of water in our mobile home. It was devastating. That really got our floodplain management department started. The Charles Page neighborhood areas are situated between the Arkansas River and they're protected by a levee. And then behind that, you've got high ground is Interstate 412. In that area, they're particularly vulnerable because of these levees that haven't been maintained since the 40s. This is also somewhat of a lower income area. The residents in that area are not really prepared to cope with it because they are in a levee protected area. Most of it is not in the floodplain. They're not required to have flood insurance either. So most people, if we saw a levee breach in that area, would be just financially devastated. The first thing we needed to do was a baseline survey. We needed to know what they knew about their level of flood risk. Skip made an incredible difference on my efforts on the flood risk awareness survey and the program for public information. The Disaster Resilience Network is basically a staff of one, myself which is one of the reasons why I was so pleased of the involvement of the Southern Climate Impacts Planning Program. Skip, thanks to them, I had one summer with two near full-time interns, and then a second summer with one intern. The interns themselves wrote up the survey. They had input from a committee made up of representatives from the city of Tulsa, from Tulsa Area Emergency Management, and the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. But ultimately, they wrote up the survey, they put it out online, and they assisted us in getting those surveys out at community events and at strategic locations in the areas around West Tulsa. If you can only do one thing, get to know your neighbor. Because ultimately, the most resilient community is the one that's most connected. That's going to provide benefits, not just during the disaster, but in an overall quality of life. My husband and I have been there 38 years. We try to get together every other month, and I usually have 30 to 40 people show up. Tim Lovell and his association did a survey in our area in 2015. We passed it out to everybody that we could think of. We have a Facebook page for our area. Somebody will put on there, hey, this is happening. We need to be aware of this. I think that's a big plus for the city. We have found that for almost all hazard mitigation, that public awareness is really key. People can do a lot just to protect themselves. We've got excellent data available on the cityoftulsa.org website. You can pull up your location and see what your flood risk is. Hopefully also through all of our program for public information and our flood insurance coverage improvement plan, we can get better coverage on flood insurance. It allows us to add on points that we otherwise would not get. Here in Tulsa, there are people that can get up to 40% deduction in their flood insurance rates because we've done all these things in our community that are going to minimize our risk. Tim Lovell with the Disaster Resilient Network has been a valuable asset in developing all of our outreach. There's no way I could have done that with all my other job responsibilities by myself. We've gone from the worst community to the nation's best in 20 years. And it was due to everybody being on the same page, working together against all the odds. And we have uh, put together a, a program that is a model for the rest of the nation.